Hello, my name's Marcus de Sotoy, and I'm a professor of mathematics at the University of Oxford, and also the Simoni Professor for the Public Understanding of Science. When I was at school, our mathematics teacher told us a story. It was a story of the young Carl Friedrich Gauss. He was nine or 10 years old at the time, and his maths teacher decided to challenge the class with a mathematical problem. He said, I want you to add up the numbers from one to a hundred. Now, I think that maths teacher probably thought he was going to get a, a nice bit of rest whilst the students went through the numbers one at a time, adding them together. But before he'd even finished asking the question, the young Gauss had written down a number on his slate board and slammed it down in front of the teacher. The teacher thought the student was being impudent, but when he looked at the number, there was the correct answer. He asked Gauss, how did you get that so quickly? Gauss replied, well, there's a shortcut. You see, all my fellow students are starting at the beginning, adding one plus two plus three plus four, and it's gonna take them ages to get all the way up to 100, and I bet they're gonna make loads of mistakes. But I thought there's a clever shortcut here because I can combine the beginning and the end of the story. So one plus 100 is 101. Two plus 99 is also 101. Three plus 98, 101. So I realized that there were 50 pairs of numbers adding up to 101. So the answer was 50 times 101, 5,050. The beautiful thing about this shortcut is even if the teacher said, OK, well, I'm going to give you an even more difficult problem. I want you to add up the numbers from one to a million. Gauss can still use the same trick. He can step back, combine the beginning and end of the journey and again, get these pairs all adding up to the same thing and get the answer very quickly. My mathematics teacher, I think I was about 12 or 13 at the time, said that's what mathematics is all about. Mathematics, it's the art of the shortcut. And my lazy teenage self began to think, I like the look of this subject. And so over the years at school, he began to teach us all these different amazing shortcuts that mathematicians have come up with over the 2000 years that we've been doing mathematics. Some of the ones I really like are the pattern shortcuts. And in fact, I sometimes call mathematics the science of patterns. Because if you can spot a pattern in the data that you're looking at, you can read that data into the future and make predictions. So you don't have to wait for the future to become the present because those patterns give you a shortcut to looking to see what's going to happen next. If you think about it, even the way we write numbers is a kind of shortcut. The ancient Egyptians, they had hieroglyphics for numbers, but they had to invent a, a new picture each time they got a new number multiplied by 10. Um, they didn't understand the value of the place value system. It was the Babylonians uh, uh, across the road who realized that if you use the position of a number, it was a shortcut to making numbers very efficiently. And the Arabs, they came up with an amazing shortcut, algebra, a kind of language to be able to find patterns in numbers. So rather than writing down lots of examples, one equation would succinctly tell you exactly what was going on inside these numbers. And geometry too. Uh, if you think about it, sometimes what looks like the shortest distance between two points isn't actually the shortest. If you look on a map and you try and predict where an aeroplane will fly from London to New York, it isn't the straight line you'd naturally draw, but a curved line that goes over Greenland. So sometimes the shortest path is not the most obvious one in geometries. And light actually uses this because light is very lazy, like me as a teenager, and likes to find the shortest way to its destination. And so we've discovered in our universe that light will sometimes bend around an object because it can go faster that way. I think one of the greatest shortcuts that mathematicians ever came up with is the calculus. Newton Leibniz's idea of a technique which means you can look at a complex situation and find, for example, the fastest way to a solution or the way to maximize your profit, profits or, or minimize energy. Calculus, in a way, is the shortcut that we've discovered for the things that nature quite often does naturally. And a diagram, I found that actually sometimes you don't want to do things in language but sometimes drawing a picture is a great way to find a shortcut to understanding a problem. 
If you think about the London Underground map that people use every day here in London, uh, it's actually a diagram of the way that the underground stations are connected. It isn't a geometric map, but it's a much more useful diagram. It throws away information about the distances which are not important. It just shows how things are connected together. In our modern age, we're kind of onslaught of data that we have to kind of negotiate. Well, statistics has given us a shortcut to actually understand we don't have to look at all the data, just a small sample of it can give you great insight into what's actually going on in the numbers. And what about chance and probability and risk, trying to predict what's going to happen next if you're in a casino, for example? Well, we've come up with this shortcut of probability. It doesn't tell you how a coin is going to land on the next throw, but over the long term, it will tell you kind of what's going to happen. And you can use that shortcut to make sure that you, uh, well, lose as little money as possible in the casino. And our modern age, we're actually having to negotiate lots of different sorts of networks. And we've discovered that some networks have incredible shortcuts to get from one place to the other. Certain networks called small world networks mean that just if you take two points in the network, there might be just six lines which will get you from one point to the other. And people might have heard of this idea of the six degrees of separation. Choose two people in the world and you'll find that there are six friendships that will get you from one person to the other. But there are some problems in mathematics where there don't seem to be any shortcuts. And the incredible thing about mathematics, it can sometimes look at itself and say when there isn't a solution to a problem. So we have a problem called the traveling salesman problem where a traveling salesman has to look at a network of cities and roads between them and look at the distances and try and find the shortest path to visit all of the cities. Turns out, it doesn't seem to be a smarter way than trying all the different possibilities and finding the one which is the shortest. We'd love a kind of clever shortcut and algorithm to find the shortest path, but we believe that this is a sort of problem that there isn't a shortcut. But trying to prove there isn't a shortcut is actually a really difficult problem. Anyway, mathematicians have worked for 2,000 years trying to come up with all of these extraordinary shortcuts. But the amazing thing today is that we can use all of these amazing tunnels that they've built in order to find our way to our goal as efficiently and fast as possible. If you'd like to find out more about the art of the shortcut, then I've written a new book called Thinking Better, The Art of the Shortcut, which documents these amazing shortcuts that mathematicians have come up with over the last 2,000 years. And you can also check out the lecture I gave at the Royal Institution.